So there are a lot of conversations out there about uh, whether morality is subjective or objective. And the, the conversations have a tendency to get really, really complex. So let's try and break it down and simplify it. Very simply speaking, subjective means according to opinion. Objective means not according to opinion. Now, if there is such a thing as an objective moral fact, then morality is not subjective. To me, this is a no-brainer, and this is patently obvious, but we need to simplify the argument because out there in YouTube and the Twitter, ver Twitter world, this starts to get really, really complicated. And part of the, part of the problem is uh, Christians trying to use the idea of objective morality to prove that God exists and overshoot the mark in terms of what conclusions can be drawn by the fact that morality is, in fact, objective. So let's just break it down Sim as simple as humanly possible. Morality is objective. There is such a thing as an objective moral fact. Here is one example. It is forever and always wrong in all situations under the sun, in any society, to harm a small child for no particularly good reason. There's not a single moral, there's not a single person who would say, no, that is not true. And here's the interesting part. If there were, that person would be morally challenged. That person would be unethical. <laughs> that person would actually more than likely be pathological. If they were making that argument for real, just as if I told you, so that is a moral fact, just as if I told you six times five equals 30. That is not an opinion. You say, hey, man, I disagree. Well, it don't matter because it is, in fact, 30. So if I tell you it is forever and always morally wrong to harm a small child for no particular reason, you tell me, hey, man, I disagree. You're 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 impeding my freedom, man. You, you're 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 wrecking my vibe, G. I think it's cool. Well, you are morally challenged. Morally, you are more than likely pathological. And there's not a single society on earth that would ever disagree with that. Therefore, I have found at least one moral fact. So we can conclude that there are others. If I can find one pretty easily, then there are thousands. What, what, why it gets confusing. First, furthermore, if morality being objective is the hidden precept of our legal code and every legal code under the sun. If morality were subjective, all legal codes would be incoherent. The very fact that we as a society decide that we have the right to put someone behind bars for a given act shows that we on some level know that there is an objectively verifiable wrongness to the act. We even quantify it. And oftentimes those, those qualifications, those quantifications are, you know, for example, um, or let's just put you in a situation. You, you, the, the judge is, you're looking at the judge. He says, you, you harm that old woman. You push that old woman down a flight of stairs and you are going to jail for six years ago. Hey man, <laughs> hey dude, there's, that is morally wrong, sir. You go, hey man, that's just your opinion, dog. Yeah, I pushed that old woman down a flight of stairs. But she was in my way and I was in a hurry. Don't be so uptight, man. See, it wouldn't work. If it were morality were subjective, the state would have no right to enforce laws. There'd be no such thing as a legal code. All legal codes would be at root somehow incoherent. And when you start actually analyzing morality as subjective, it starts to reveal itself as a completely incoherent idea. Yeah, there are some attributes of morality that are potentially subjective. That's where it gets confusing. For example, you get a tattoo. Some people say, you know, that's wrong. That's really wrong. I can't believe you got a tattoo. Other people be like, okay, not a big deal. Is there anything objectively, verifiably wrong about getting a tattoo? I'm not sure. I don't know. Probably not. It's not happening to a person other than yourself. So that in and of itself would tend to, to make me think probably not. But let's take when, we're, when, we're, when we are enforcing laws, 
the law takes into account not only the fact that morality is objective, but there are circumstances that mitigate or increase the guilt of a given person who is violated. For example, um, if you have harmed somebody, but you didn't mean to, let's say you killed a person, the law makes a really big distinction, a really, really, really big distinction between degrees of culpability. If, if the fact that the law does that and can do that tells you right there that there is such a thing as objectively verifiable moral facts. There are degrees of culpability involved in a crime. You kill somebody, premeditated. You plan on killing someone, then you go ahead and kill them. The law takes that, makes you, holds you a lot more guilty, rightfully so, than if you accidentally kill somebody. <laughs> You're crossing the street. You know, and someone, well, how would you kill someone crossing the street? Okay, so you're driving in your car, and somebody's crossing the street, and you kill him. You run into, you run him down. The law would make you, the law holds you far less accountable for the taking of that life than if you actually planned on killing the guy with your car, and, and he'd be there at a certain time. So the law understands that there's objectively verifiable moral reality. I mean, this is kind of obvious because there'd be no such thing as a, as, a, as a coherent legal code if morality were not in some way objective, in some way. It's part of the confusion comes is that we don't, we aren't really where we need to be in terms of our moral understanding. We're only beginning to understand. We're only beginning to illuminate the moral process and we aren't very far along. Now, one last thing I'll say on the subject, and then we'll move on to more fertile territory. Yeah, there's more fertile, there's more fertile things, there are better things to talk about than this. Uh, I think, <laughs> maybe not. Okay, so one last thing on the subject. If you are one of these atheists, and some of you aren't, some of you have given this up, but some of you are still on this point. If you are one of these atheists that argue that the, the God of the Bible is morally suspect, and you, you predicate that on the fact that um, slavery is endorsed in the Old Testament. Now, that's a fine argument for a couple of things. That's fine if you want to argue that the Bible is inerrant. That's a perfectly good argument against the inerrancy of the Bible. Matter of fact, it's a really good argument against the inerrancy of the Bible. Um, it's a fairly good argument that the God as written by the Bible or as understood by the Bible has some moral failings, okay? But what you cannot do, and I've seen people do this, you cannot argue in one debate that the God of the Bible is morally suspect and use as evidence the fact that slavery is endorsed in, in Exodus and then go somewhere else in a different debate and argue that morality is subjective. Why? Because those are mutually contradictory ideas. Really obviously so. You just haven't thought about it. Really obviously so, actually. Think about it. You're making the argument on one, on one channel or one debate that the God of the Bible is morally suspect. And you're saying, and somebody says, well, how are you coming to that conclusion? Say, well, for example, he endorses slavery in Exodus. And then what? You finish the sentence. And we all know that slavery is what? Wrong. According to what? According to a moral fact. You are putting that down as a moral fact. And then in a different video, you are arguing that there's no such thing as a moral fact. Honestly, that's what you're doing. And you, you should stop because it doesn't make any sense. So pick one or the other. Throw one of those arguments out the window because they can't both be, both be true. If you think that the Bible, the Bible's representation of God is somehow morally challenged because of the endorsement of slavery, that's perfectly legitimate beef. That's a perfectly legitimate claim against the inerrancy of the Bible or against the morality of the Old Testament God. But you cannot argue that one place and then in a different place argue that morality is subjective. Why? Because you're arguing in a different area that, that you are holding the God of the Bible accountable to a moral standard that is objective. You're saying he violates moral facts. And then you go somewhere else and argue that moral facts don't exist. Mutually contradictory ideas. Just just point it out. I'm not, not pointing at anybody in particular. You know, just saying, if you do that, you should stop. But anyways, that's all for now. That is all on the subject. And I hope I solved everybody's problems with that because I'm pretty sure I did. Okay, bye-bye.